Hey everybody, we're going to do indices uh, with factors today, and that includes squares and square roots, and cubes and cube roots, and all the variations thereof. Um, so I thought we'd look at our objectives for today's little video. We're going to assess on what we already know about indices. Um, GCSE people, some of them might have done NICATs last year, and in the NICATs, we, although we expand on it, I did touch on it briefly on uh, in before Christmas. So. We're going to see what you already know or what you remember about that. We're going to write down the four main rules of indices. I'm going to use a calculator to solve problems involving indices, including cube roots. Very excited, I'm sure you are. Let's get straight into it. So how much do you already know? Uh, we've covered some of this topic in the first term. And in the notes that I have attached to, to this, I've made a little box for you to, to put in all you think you know about in the box. And uh, yeah, see it recall. So let's, you can pause the video for a minute and do that. Otherwise, I'm going to continue on. Right. You probably already know. One of the things you already know probably is that a squared means actually a times a. A times a isn't 2a because that would be a plus a. If I had two a's or two monkeys or two cars or two uh, cakes, that's two of those. If I multiply the cakes together, that's cake squared. Or in this case, a squared is equal to a times a. So you might already know that. So, what is 4 squared? Well, 4 squared means 4 times 4, which is 16. And using your calculator to find that, you'd press the 4, and there's probably an x squared button on your computer. It might be even the shift function. If you can't find it, bring it into main class, and, and, and we'll make sure you know where it is. Uh, and then you press the equal sign, and you should get the 16. So, we say that 4 is the square root of 16. So, the square root is the opposite of squaring something, and it's one of those things you either need a calc for, calculator for, or there are ones that you know. Like the square root of 16 is 4. The square root of 25 is 5. What's minus 4 squared? No. So that means minus 4 multiplied by minus 4. Which is also 16. Right. Because your 4 4s are 16, your minus minus gives you a plus, so it gives you plus 16. Just like 4 squared did. So... Minus 4 is also the square root of 16. So we'd say that the square root of 16 is plus or minus 4. There are possibilities of both. So the, the ways to make 16 uh, are plus 4 times plus 4 or minus 4 times minus 4. If you mix the signs up, you will not get plus 16 and therefore will not have a square root. Okay. So I'll introduce that concept to you because it's one that... Uh, We'll come up when we do quadratic equations and, and, and things like that, things of that nature. Um, and when I, I do the question in, uh, in the class, etc., I will bounce these off you. Okay, so what's the square root of 25 using that? Which, using the calculator, press the square root button and then the 25 equals. In some calculators, especially old calculators, you might have to put the 25 in the square root uh, the other way around. So anything without a graphical uh, layout of what you're doing, in my cal my day, you know. Even though it was probably only 5, not 18 years ago. Um, I would have had 25 square root and then equals. But you can find out which gives you the right answer. And it'll probably just say 5. This is the important thing to say. Your calculator will just say plus 5. Because that's the common answer. But remember that it is also possible to be minus 5 as well. So square root of 25 is plus or minus 5. That's 5 times 5 is 25. And minus 5 times minus 5 is 25. So let's look at cube and cube roots. What does this mean? A cubed is much like a squared. A times a times a. So what's 5 cubed? Well, it's 5 times 5 times 5. And if you do the maths of that, 5 times 5 gives you 25. Then we'll multiply that by 5 again. And that will give us 125. And that's one of the ones that for GCSE, you'd expect to know the 5 cubed numbers that you need to know are 1 cubed, which is 1. 2 cubed, which is 8. 3 cubed, which is 27. And 4 cubed, which is 64. 5 cubed is 125. Those are the 5 that you expect be expected to recognize and know. We say that the cube root of 125 is 5. And, oh, I'm missing a little line here. That should be a third. The way we would write the cube root is either using this symbol here on the right. So it's like a square root function, but with a 3 at the side. Or 125 to the power of, and that should be a third. Right there, it should be a line between them, it should be a fraction, and equals 5. And that's either way of notating that. 7 cubed 
equals 7 times 7 times 7, which is 49 times 7, which everybody can do in their head to give you 343. So we'd also say that 343 to the power of a third equals 7, because that's the rotation for cube root 7. And remember, there should be a fraction there. It should be a line in there. It's so bad, it just hasn't quite come out on the when I go to full screen. Weird. Okay, so index next notation, we've looked at some of it already. Uh, we've looked squared, cubed, and then the third, etc. for that. The general rule is a to the power of n, where n is a number, is just the number of those a's multiplied together. So if you have a to the 5, you'll have 5 a's multiplied together. Uh, a to the 19, there'll be 19 a's multiplied together. So what is 3 to the power of 4? What's 3 times 3 times 3 times 3? Which is 81. What about 4 to the power of 5? 4 to the 5 is 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4, which will give you 1024. What if I was asked it in this question? 3 to the power of what gives me 81? Well, we know that 81 is 9 ninths. And this is one method of doing it, by the way. I, I should say that there are others. But you can break the number that you know down into its factors. And if you can always try and stick to cubes or square numbers that you know, it'll be help even better. But uh, 81 is 9 ninths. We also know that 9 is 3 times 3. So that's also 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. And we can also notate that as 3 to the power of 4. And there's some examples on that in the notes as well. So n equals 4. And that's your little teaser. That's the extended one. Now, you will not get asked that in ICATS. Certainly not. But I'm going to teach it this year. And I'm going to give you some examples on how to do it. Because if I come back to it next year, or you are doing GCSE, especially the higher one, you will get these types of questions, absolutely. And the GCSE ones will, will get more of these, certainly, than, than anybody else. Okay, so it's a little teaser for you. Rules of indices. First one. And again, we looked at this... Um, last year before Christmas. Uh, a to the power of m times n, a to the n is equal to the a to the m plus n. What does that mean when m and n are integers? Well, it just means if we have two indices of the same number to the power of another number, we just add the indices together. We're going to check this rule. 2 to the 3 times 2 to the 4. Right? If we use the rule, that would be 2 to the 3 plus the 4 which would equal 2 to the 7. We're going to check it another way, because we know that it's 128. We know that 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2, and 2 to the 4 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. I bracketed it to make it clear, which is 8 times 16, but you can actually want, if you can count them there, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. There are 2 to the power of 7, just as before, and it guess still gives us 128. Rule 2. Oops. A to the m divided by a to the n is equal to a to the m minus n. Same idea as before. Divided by or in a fraction, because that's all a fraction is, is a dividing sum. We've got an indice to the same number to the power of something else. We subtract the two indices. So in this case, we have 2 to the 4 divided by 2 to the 3. Using the rule, that's 2 to the 4 minus 3, which is 2 to the 1. 2 to the power of 1 is also just 2. It's just 2 multiplied by itself. One time. There you go. It's 2. Uh, we can check it. 2 to the 4 is that over that. Which is 16 over 8. Which also gives us 2 as before. And what we generally do is we cancel out. If we get the same number on the top and the bottom. Same as letters in algebra. We can cancel them out. Why? Because 2 divided by 2 gives us 1. Just like 8 divided by 8 gives us 1, or anything divided by itself will just give you 1. Because all the dividing sum is, how many of those are in that? So how many 2's are in 2? There are 1. So we cancel those down, because it just gives us 1, and we're just left with b with 1, 2 at the top. Root 3. Again, looked at it before Christmas. a to the m to the power of n is equal to the a to m n, or m times n. So two, that notation goes. So we'll verify the rule for 2 squared cubed. Right? 2 squared cubed, using the rule, would be 2 to the 2 times 3, which is 2 to the 6. Let's check that rule, which is 64. Let's check it. 2 squared is 4. And 4 cubed would be 4 times 4 times 4. Which 
still equals 64, just like before. We're all good so far. Rule 4. This one blows people's minds because it doesn't seem to make any sense. Right? A to the minus 1 is equal to 1 over A. And what I'll tell you is this. It's a notation thing. It's a way of expressing this rather than it following the same rules as before. Right? It's the way we express uh, 1 over A. And what it basically means, just for general, A to the minus of any number is equal to 1 over A to the power of that number. So if we've got 5 to the minus 1, and it can be hard because people don't associate 5 to the minus 1, a whole number with a fraction, but it actually means 1 over 5. And there are examples for you to try in the notes as well. Isn't this exciting? All the stuff we're learning equals 0.2 as a decimal, if you really need to know. And that is rule 4. So if I ask you to evaluate 2 to the minus 4, well, the first thing you should do is take into account the minus, and the minus usually just means 1 over that number to the power of whatever it is. So 2 to the minus 4 is 1 over 2 to the, mi two to the 4. Then you can evaluate your 2 to the 4 as 16, or 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which you'll find to be 16. And 2 to the minus 4 is 1 over 16. Like I say, it can be hard for people to get around because they symbolize indices 2 to the power of 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 as really big numbers. But the minus actually makes it really small. Okay, It becomes a fraction of itself and becomes closer to 0 than it does 1, which is quite cool. There's the decimal as well. What about a half to the minus 1? Again, not an ICATS thing as at all, but here's one for GCSE hires. What you are actually doing with the 2 to the power of minus 4 is saying that that is 2 to the 4 over 1, and you're flipping it upside down. You're calling what we call transposing it. And if I put 1 over a half, and I do it in the calculator, 1 divided by half, you will actually find that that is 2. Right? In the test in your calculator, you do 1 divided by a half on your calculator, you will find that that's 2. So essentially what you do when you do one thing over down, you do a thing called transpose, you flip it upside down. 2 to the minus 4 is actually 2 to the 4, two, 1 over 2 to the 4, right, because the minus, you're just flipping that upside down. 2 to the 4, if I flip that upside down, it'll be 2 to the 4 over 1. The minus means we'll flip it upside down. Here, we'll flip this, if we flip this upside down, it would become 2 over 1, which is just 2. And if that doesn't make any sense, I don't blame you, you're not the first person to say that makes sense, but once you do a number of these examples, you'll actually see that it works, and you get the right answer, and that's all hunky dory. Let's push it a wee bit even further. Again, Nike Hudson will not be testing this, but we're, I'm doing a dual purpose photo um, video here. So if 81 to the minus a half, and I didn't get really introducing this earlier on, but much like 81 to the third is a cube root, the half is a square root, except it's minus a half. So much like, think of it was 80, 81 to the minus 1, it would be just over 1 over 81. But in this case, it's 1 over 81 to the power of a half. And 81 to the power of a half is the square root of 81, which is 9. And that's the answer. And that's the end of our show today. Any questions, bring them into class. We'll go through them. We'll do lots of examples then in class. Um, I'll probably already, I'll have already taught it for the, the NICATS ones in class, and we'll talk our way through it, and we'll see how you get on. And I, as always, I'll try and stretch you when we're doing NICATS as well, um, to see if you can see what your boundaries are. It helps you prepare for next year if you're thinking about doing the GCSE hire, etc. And it stops you from getting bored. I don't like people being bored in the class. Let's challenge you and see how you go. These were objectives today. We assessed on what you already know. Did that at the start. We write down the four main rules of indices. We covered the four of those. And then we used a calculator the whole way along to solve problems involving indices, including cube roots. And I would suggest that if you're following along with the notes, now you go back through and you write in exactly what you pressed in your calculator because there's nothing like getting to the exam and realizing, oh God, I can't remember 
how I put that in my calculator right in the, the sequence of button presses that you did in your notes and then you'll be much better off when you come to revise it and look to it later. Hope that helps you in some way and remember that I did make it a wee bit harder but the purpose of the videos is to see how much you can grasp and bring your questions with you. Okay, I'll see you then. Take it easy. Bye.